Hello everyone and welcome to this week's Everton Show. Well, during a week in which Finch Farm has had a wee bit of ice and snow, who better to have alongside me on this week's programme than Gilfie Sigurdsson. You must have been loving it out there and all that ice and snow. Uh, yeah, it was a bit cold, but um, I actually prefer playing in, in this kind of weather. It um, reminds me of home. and um, You've got to keep moving, haven't you? Exactly, you've got to keep moving to keep warm. It's another big week, Gilfie, another big game, Burnley at Turf Moor, which is never easy. But a chance still for us to go join seventh. Yeah, I think um, even with disappointing results uh, against Watford, we've still got the chance of um, moving up the table, and I think that's what the not just the boys but the staff and the whole the whole team is looking at. There's a real hunger amongst the boys, isn't there, to, to finish seventh? There is, yeah. I mean, it, it's been a strange season. Of course, we were not in the best position and weren't playing our best football um, first half of the season, but um, we always kept going, and we've kind of put us in a position where we can actually finish on a, on a good mm. good part or, or finish on a high this season. Um, if we continue to do what we've been doing, especially at home, um, then we can make this a, a better season than what it looked looked like um, at the start of the season. You can understand the supporters' frustrations when they, they say, why can't we replicate the home form on the road? But it's, it's not always that easy, is it? No, of course not. Um, uh, it's something we are looking at um, and we're doing everything we, we can and we want to bring that good form at home into the away games because I mean we're hard to beat at home, we're getting results, we're getting goals and and um, if we can get a few results away from home then we'd be in an even better position. So um, yeah of course I mean it's not just the fans that are frustrated with, mm. with the away form, us players and, and the staff are as well. It's been some first season for you at Everton Football Club, Gilfie, hasn't it? You've had a little bit of everything, even so far. Ups and downs, highs and lows in equal measure. Yeah, it's, uh, I think it's only been uh, what, six, seven months or something, but it feels like <laughs> a, lot a lifetime. Yeah, a lifetime. <laughs> it's been, it's been um, a lot of ups and downs. and it's um, Actually, of course, looking back at it, I think... I can't say I've enjoyed the first part of the season where things weren't going our way and we were losing, but um, it's been such a different season than what you're used to. Um, if you look at the results at the beginning of the season, but we've still got, got a chance to go seventh with, mm. a, with a win on this weekend. So um, it's been a strange season, but hopefully it'll be a good ending to it. You've cracked a few good ones in so far. Which is your, which is your favourite goal so far? Um... It's nice that there's a few to choose from, isn't it? Yeah, of course. Um, I think the Southampton one was a good one, but um, I think my first one against uh, Hadjik Split, um, so was Lee. Um, I think a goal I remember for a, for a long time. Were you a bit disappointed when Wayne Rooney then scored from inside his own half? No, um, I actually think mine was mine's <laughs> better, so uh, it was good for him to get a, almost as good, of, good, of, good as a goal. Um, no, I think obviously his goal was uh, fantastic bit more technique to the way he struck the ball, but I'll, uh, I'll have to give myself the, the winner of those two goals. It'll be interesting to see <laughs> which one comes out on top at the end of the season <laughs> yeah. awards. How are you enjoying working with Sam Allardyce, Gilfie? Yeah, he's good. Um, he's, um, he's a very straightforward man. Um, I think he, he tells you what he wants, tells the players how he wants us to play, so um, he's very organised, very into stats, um, and he knows what to what to do to win games and how to break down and, and beat the opponent. Um, he's very, he's actually quite funny um, around the training ground. Um, good man to man, he looks after the players, mm -hmm. gives us rest when we need it, and and he works us hard when when we have to, um, just so that we got the chance of um, performing to our our levels on a on a match day. Uh, but uh, I think obviously with his experience, um, he's a very good manager. Just changing track slightly. The World Cup in the summer, Iceland will be there. Is the excitement building already back in Iceland? Yeah, I think. Um, Probably hasn't stopped, has it, since you no, qualified? No, exactly. Yeah, it's been it's been now um, a long time coming, and uh, of course, it's coming it's coming fast. Um, but I can only speak for myself. I've been waiting for the for the tournament, and still I am. Um, and I think the nation is. Is with me as well. I think everyone's just very excited for the for the first game. Obviously, it's our first first World Cup tournament, so um, it's very special, and I think um, everyone's really looking forward to it. 
for the older generation of football supporters who have never known anything like this. It must be absolutely fabulous back home. Yeah, it is. It's been it's been a really good five or six years. Um, just missed out on the World Cup in Brazil, mm. and then made it to obviously France uh, for the Euros, and now we made it to Russia for the World Cup. So it's been um, it's been not just for the fans, but for us players as well. It's been it's been a very exciting time and and a very good one to be a part of. How much belief did the did the Euros give you? Because you've done ever so well. Um, a lot of belief. I think the most important game was losing to Croatia, uh, just missing out on uh, the World Cup in Brazil. I think that kind of made us more determined to actually get to the final, being that close to getting mm. to the World Cup. Um, and I think, of course, with going to the Euros and doing well in France, that showed us we, we actually can do this and, and we kind of set, a, set ourselves a target, even though we were in a tough group. Uh, we um, wanted to go to Russia as well. Well, of course, one player that Gilfie Sigurdsson could meet in the World Cup is Ramiro Funes Mori. Iceland and Argentina have been drawn together in Group D. It's great to see Ramiro back in full training and we caught up with him recently. He confirmed he's ready and he's raring to go. Yeah, of course, I'm very happy to be uh, fully fit in the squad. Uh, you know, it's been ages you know, since my injury, but uh, now I think it's all uh, in behind. So. Uh, just looking forward to, to joining the team, to, to be fit, to, to ready to play. Obviously, I had some two games in the under-23s, and that was giving me the um, I'm elig eligible to play for the first team. And since you've been out injured, a new manager has come in, Sam Allardyce, and his backroom staff. Does that give you extra motivation now because you've, you've got to prove yourself to a new manager? Yeah, of course. I think it's when you're injured and you know, different managers come, it's tough because you have to, you know, uh, show what you can give to to the team and to the club. But uh, he knows that every player, and I think uh, he have given the opportunity to every injured player that's come back. Uh, Seamus, Jamesy, uh, Yannick. So uh, you know, I'm, I'm I'm waiting for that opportunity also. Have you had any World Cup banter with Ramiro yet? Um, nothing too serious. Um, obviously, I am, and I think he is as well, hoping. That um, with a short period of time, he has to get proper fit. Um, I'm sure he's more than capable of doing it. And if he gets gets a few games under his belt, he's got a chance mm. to be there. So um, hopefully for him, he he'll be in Russia. Great to see him back, isn't it? Yeah, he's he's a very good defender. Actually, surprised how good he is and how well he's come back from such a um, difficult injury. Mm. But you can see in training, he's working really hard and, and he's um, he's a top player. Good to see Leighton Baines back as well, Gilfie. Yeah, um, of course we need um, all of our um, senior players and, and good quality players fit and he's one of them. So um, it's, it's nice to see him back back training and hopefully he can stay fit until the end of the season. Well, when you think of Leighton Baines, you often think of Stephen Pienaar as well, our former South African international midfielder this week, announced his retirement. And amongst all his media obligations, he found time to talk to the Everton show. Yeah, it's been playing in my head for a while, so um, obviously sitting down with uh, with my family, um, talking about everything, what we want to do next. Um, yeah, then uh, you know, you uh, came to to make peace with it uh, with the decision. You know, when you get injured, you you, you always want to be on the field. So for me, that was a bad bad time. But every time I was fit, I enjoyed my time. Um, I had good memories. Uh, the support has been great to me, the club. Um, yeah, and for me, um, obviously representing uh, the Blues was something special. When I joined Everton, I think that's where uh, I played uh, the, the best part of my, my football. Uh, even sometimes uh, it didn't go the way I wanted, but, <laughs> you know, you always uh, want to win uh, something with a club that you, you've played for so long. And, yeah, that's uh, the that's, uh, only minor the minor thing in uh, my time at Everton, uh, couldn't win a, a trophy with the club. Uh, the reception I got when I joined the club at first, um, that was uh, unbelievable. Made me feel at home from day one. Uh, the supporters have always been great to me. And you know, when, when you have love from, from the supporters, you you more you feel at home, you, you're more relaxed. You can just enjoy and make uh, the supporters happy. And that's what I always wanted to do, you know, from the training grounds, take everything to the field. So. Obviously, the supporters don't see what you're doing on uh, on a training pitch, but 
then you have the weekend games where you have to show them that you really appreciate the love that they've been giving you and make sure you, you wear that uh, shirt with, uh, with pride. You played against Stephen Pienaar, of course, in the Premier League, Gilfie, and also trained with him for a while as well. Yeah, I trained with him for a few weeks um, at Tottenham um, and obviously played against him as well. So um, I know how, how good he was technically and um, he was a very clever player. He could mm. see things. Um, so it's sad for him to, um, to retire, but he's had a wonderful career and, and a fantastic player. And he had a terrific partnership here with Leighton Baines, as I alluded to earlier. They seemed to be telepathic. They were so on the same wavelength. Yeah, I remember watching him um, or playing against him. Um, it was kind of when you played against Everton or when you were watching Everton, them two were, were the ones you kind of had to stop and make sure they they didn't create too much because um, they're, I mean, they gelled really well, they played really well together and um, I think they were, they were, I think if you look at the at a full back and a, and a winger, they were probably the, the best two for a couple of years. Who's the best on-field partner you've had? Um, I've had a few. I think um, when I played with uh, Wilfred Boney um, at oh. Swansea, um, we kind of never worked on anything, but we always knew where the other one was or where where he was going to run or where he was going to be. So it was it was quite easy just um, to play off him and, and play with him. Plenty more to come from Gilfie Sigurdsson in part two of this week's programme when we'll hear from Michael Keane. Welcome back to part two of this week's Everton show. As you can see, I'm in the company of Gilfie Sigurdsson here at USM Finch Farm. Gilfie, let's go right back to the very beginning. When did you start kicking a football around the streets of Iceland? <laughs> I think I was, I was probably literally when I started walking in the house, I, I probably really? had a football here yeah, kicking about with my brother, uh, with my dad, um, breaking things. Um, <laughs> but f I think I started training with my local team around Maybe four or five, something like that. Was it a popular sport, a hugely popular sport in Iceland when you were a kid? <coughs> yeah, I think it's it's been the most popular sport um, for years now, back home. Um, and I think it's getting more, obviously, more popular with the success of the national team at the moment. When did you realise that you had something about you? Because every every small boy wants to play football, wants to be in a school team, wants to score the goals, but very, very few realise that they are actually better than most of the rest. Um, it's a good question. I think um, I always wanted to be a, a professional footballer and I always wanted to move away from Iceland to to be able to um, to play football on grass all year round. Um, but I think as soon as I got the chance to not just go on a trial but actually sign for Reading, um, that kind of made me realise that I've got a chance not to play mm. in the Championship or in the Premier League. Um, so it was probably around 15, 16 where you can actually see yourself achieving your dreams. It's funny you should say that. You need to move away from the country so you can play on grass all year round. It's, there are geographical issues, aren't <laughs> there, with football in Iceland? Yeah, of course the weather isn't um, the best over there. Um, but of course we have indoor halls now, full-size pitches indoor, which um, allows the kids now to play in a lot better conditions <laughs> than when I was playing football. But, but um, yeah, I think the only chance for me to to become a professional was to to move away from Iceland as, as soon as possible to have the best training and the best coaching possible. Was it mentally tough for you when you first came over? You were a young man <laughs> leaving home, leaving your own country, moving to, to the UK away from your family? Not really. Um, I always wanted to do it. Um, I was always ready to, to move away from Iceland. Um, I think I was only away for six months on my own until my parents actually moved over as well. Right. So that kind of made it um, a lot easier for me first. Um, it gave me obviously a lot of support having them there, but I think I was always kind of ready just to, to leave Iceland and, and chase my dream. How much of a learning curve was your short spell at Shrewsbury Town? It was good. Um, I think it was good for me to, to experience League Two and League One uh, with crew as well. And just um, to get some proper games instead of playing the, in the reserve team and playing games where some of the first team players didn't really want to be playing in and then mm. you had under 18 players playing. So um, it was, I think, much needed experience and, and playing for points on a weekend was much better than playing in the reserves. 
Did you enjoy playing in Germany in the Bundesliga for Hoffenheim? Yeah, it was um, that was a good, very good experience. I mean, it's a step up again, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. Um, if you look at the stadiums, um, the teams over there, it's, it's a top top league, very tough league, and the atmosphere in the stadiums as well is, is fantastic. It's always sold out, um, and yeah, it was, I mean, I really enjoyed playing there. Did you always want to come back to the Premier League, though, Gilfrey? I think so. Yeah, it was. I think the Premier League is the the league everyone back home in Iceland watches. Um, and me, when I was a kid, I was no different. So there was where I wanted to play football, and, and I'm lucky enough I've, I've been playing it for a number of years now. Just away from the pitch, how's your golf? A bit rusty. I'm uh, not going to lie. I haven't played too much golf uh, over the winter. I'm more of a off-season or in the summer type of golfer, <laughs> so I'll have to wait a couple of more months uh, until the clubs will be out every day. What other things occupy your time when you're not playing football? Um, it's a good question. Um, I try to relax as much as I can in between games and in sessions. Um, of course, we do travel a lot, playing internationals and uh, and stuff like that, but um, yeah, golfing, um, do you, yeah. the, do you get the chance to go back to Iceland? Much? No, n not not as much as I I'd like to. Mainly with international games and and in the summer I spend a bit of time there. Um, do a bit of salmon fishing right. when I go back home in the summer. Um, so what about at home? Can you get if you got, can you get an Icelandic TV channel or do you get Icelandic DVDs to watch? Yeah, yeah, of course. I mean anything is possible. This this um, day and age, um, you can get anything you want basically. It's all through the internet and, and stuff like that, but um, I do tend to probably watch more of uh, American episodes and, and, and films. Plenty more to come from Gilfie Sigurdsson, but we're going to hear now from Michael Keane, who of course is back on his old stomping ground at the weekend, when we go to Burnley. Yeah, I'm excited. Uh, when the fixture list first came out, it's the, the first one I looked for. Obviously, I was there for three years and um, had, had a great time there. I love everything about the club. Um, so yeah, I'm uh, looking forward to going back. How big a part of your development was your time at Burnley? Because that's where you really established yourself as a Premier League footballer, wasn't it? Yeah, it was massive. Um, went had some downs there, getting relegated, but then to bounce back. Um, and just the fact I played so many games there, uh, week in, week out, um, with the manager that they've got, um, he taught me a lot. Um, and yeah, obviously I played a full season in the Premier League, which uh, enabled me to get my move here. Um, so yeah, it was, it was fantastic for me and I uh, definitely became a better player when I was there. You had a few loan spells before you went to Burnley and you originally joined them on loan as well. So how big a decision was it to leave a club like Manchester United and decide you were going to sign permanently for Burnley and make your career there almost? Yeah, it was a big decision, but uh, when the time came in January, um, I knew it was the right thing. I wasn't sure at first, that's why I went on loan. Um, but in January, I knew I'd, uh, that the club was, was great for me. I was playing games in the Premier League. Um, it was the best experience I, I was going to get. and. Um, I could tell with the, the staff I had there, the players I was playing with, that I'd, I'd become a better player. So uh, I made the decision and um, yeah, I think it was the right one. You were a hugely popular player there as well. Was that the case from the start with your links with Blackburn for a short while as well? Did they let you off that when you first arrived? I think they did, to be fair. There's probably one or two that um, were questioning me, but um, they, they soon warmed to me. And like I said, the, the, all the fans were, were fantastic with me there. And um, I'm looking forward to seeing them all at the weekend, but obviously, hopefully, I uh, can get the win with Everton. That's the main thing. Um, it's, it's a massive game for us. Uh, if we win, we go level on points with them, uh, so we'll be looking to do that. It's not an easy place to go to, Burnley, is it? No, I mean, they're always tough to, to play against. They don't score a lot of goals, but they don't concede many either. They're very hard to break down and defend really well. Um, and they're a very tough team to, to play against. Will you be speaking to Johan Gudmundsson this week, who's the only other Icelandic international in the Premier League? Yeah, I'll speak to him after the game, but uh, I think before the game and during the game, I won't be saying too much then. <laughs> if you get the chance, are you going to go right in? Uh, go think of the World Cup. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, you don't want him to be injured there. Um, no, of course, I mean, we're playing for three points, and um, that's, uh, I think that's the most important thing. Jordan Pickford's done well since he came to the football club, hasn't he? Yeah, he's been fantastic. Um, I think even with us conceding a lot of goals early on in the season, I don't think he was the one to blame. He's he's been very good, and for his young, I mean he's very young still, and um, for a goalkeeper to be playing at this level and playing this well is um, not very common. Normally keepers take a little bit longer to 
to get to the highest level, but he's 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 fantastic, and um, I think he'll have a very good future ahead of him. You got to know him quite well, haven't you? Yeah, um, we live close together. Um, spend a lot of time um, together, not just here at the training ground, but we do things outside of football as well. He's had to be mentally tough, hasn't he? Because he's a young boy. It was a big transfer fee, and as I said, from time to time we have conceded goals, even though they haven't been his fault. It must must get him down a little bit from time to time. Um, yeah, I think I think he looks at it the right way. He um, gets frustrated instead of getting down. Um, but he works really hard, and um, you can see he's kept us in a lot of games. And I think, um, as I said, with his not just his technique, but uh, he's actually a very good goalkeeper as well. Ten games to go, Gilfie, of the season. We've been on winning runs before. We can do so again, can't we? Yeah, I think it's very important, um, especially the next few games, um, that we get on to a on a good run, uh, like we did before, where we won a few games without losing and um, getting back-to-back -back victories together. That actually moves you up mm. the table very quickly, um, and I think that's the the target for us to to get back to winning ways and and stay in there. As you found out at international level and also at club level, confidence and momentum, is, it's everything, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Um, as I said before, we turned the corner with winning one game and then all of a sudden things looked better and, and we started playing better and, and we were getting results. Even though we probably, in some of the games, we weren't performing to our maximum, we were still getting results. And, and I think that shows what um, momentum and, and confidence does to our team. Are you enjoying playing for the Everton supporters? Of course, yeah, they're very, very passionate. Um, and every, I mean, every away game, the away stand is filled. Yeah. Um, it's incredible, so that isn't it? It's unbelievable, um, and uh, I think it means a lot to the players as well. Even though when we weren't doing well, they were still travelling to every away game. So it's um, it's very good, especially when we're winning. They're uh, very loud, <laughs> but when we're losing, they they let us know. <laughs> There's nowhere to hide. No, is exactly. It? Gilfie, thank you so much for joining us this week on the Everton Show. Thank you very much indeed for watching. Do join us again in seven days' time. You've been watching the Everton Show on YouTube. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. I hope you've enjoyed it. I'm sure you have. Don't forget to subscribe, and that way you can catch every single future episode.